Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna explain how to get GS Pro connected to your R10 and how to use it. All the software you need in detail, let's get into it. Now, when I talk hardware, I'm talking about the gaming laptop or gaming PC that you're gonna run this on. GS Pro does actually detail what you need on their website in terms of hardware, so I'm gonna pull that up. Okay, so on their website, you can jump in here, and it'll detail everything. So if you go to frequently asked questions, what are the minimum and recommended system requirements? So in here, it has the recommended minimum hardware for 1080p play, which is gonna be a very basic gaming laptop. What I went for was the recommended hardware for great a great 1080p experience. However, I got the RTX 3060. So for reference, I got the Lenovo Legion 5i. It's got an Intel Core i7 and it's got an RTX 3060 graphics card, not the TI. Before I bought this gaming laptop, I've never had anything like this in my life. I'm not well versed in graphics cards, but what I can tell you is the first two numbers are the series. So for instance, if it's a 10 series, it's early on, a 20 series is more recent and 30 series are the most recent. I think the 40 series are about to be released. And then within those uh, families, these last two numbers go up as well. And the higher the last two numbers are, the better the graphics cards are in those series. So like I said, I went for closer to the recommended hardware for a great 1080p experience. With my laptop, I can run every course on GS Pro, no issues. On the more demanding courses, I probably get about 30 to 40 frames per second and that's solid and then on the less demanding courses I'm getting 60 to 70 frames per second and that's running it on ultra. So just know if you do opt for lesser hardware you still can run GS Pro but you're just going to have to run it on GS Pro Lite it's called or maybe even a medium or high setting just not ultra. So once you've got your laptop and you're sorted with that the next step is to buy GS Pro the software. So if you click buy it now, there's two options. So the one I've got is the GS Pro subscription with simulator, and this is $250 US a year. Or you can opt for GS Pro subscription plus the lifetime add-on, which is currently $550 US a year. However, with this lifetime add-on, it's still gonna be $250 a year after your initial purchase. So, what it means in a nutshell is if you opt for the just the subscription, each year you're gonna pay your $250 US a year, and then when the year rolls around, you're gonna pay that again, and you're gonna get all the updated courses and everything involved for $250 a year. With the lifetime add-on, what you're doing is you're buying the product, and then you're also getting the subscription. So if you use GS Pro for a year, you pay your 550 US dollars, you've got it for a year. When that year rolls around, if you don't want to pay for the subscription, that's fine. You'll still have everything that was there when you subscribed, okay? But that $250 a year extra is now giving you updates. So you'll get new courses, you'll get um, all the future updates that GS Pro is gonna bring. If you don't want any new courses or you don't want any new features, you're happy with the product you've got, then you can just choose to not pay any more money and you'll have GS Pro, the product that you know it, for the rest of your life. However, you're not gonna get any updates. Cool, so once you've figured out which one you wanna buy, say it's a subscription, if you use the drop-down box, these are all of the launch monitors that GS Pro supports, so Unicore, Flight Scope, Ernest Sports. However, you can also purchase other slash open API. And that's the one we need because our launch monitor, the R10, isn't officially supported by GS Pro. So once you click on that, from there, this screen will pop up. Enter in your details, purchase. And then once you've purchased it, they say it'll take a little bit of time. Mine was instant. You will get an email from GS Pro. Pull up your emails. And what you'll get in your emails is something that looks like this. You'll get your license key, and then you'll also get the download links 
to put GS Pro onto your PC. Once you hit download now, it'll ask you where to save it, save it to your computer, and now you've got GS Pro. Okay, so that's the first step. Now we need to be able to send the data from the R10 to the open API. So what you're gonna to need to do is jump back into Chrome. I'll put a link in the description and you're gonna to want to go to GitHub and you want this Travis Lang GS Pro slash Garmin Connect V2. This has all the instructions on what you've got to do to get this working with the R10. So it says, download the zip file, go to the releases page, download the file gspro slash r10 connect dot zip. So you go to the releases page and then we look for the gspro dash r10 connect zip and you click on that and you download it. So what you'll have now is you'll have gspro and you'll have the GitHub file downloaded. All right, so what you'll need to do, when you download this file, okay, uh, let me go back so you can see it. It'll look like this. In your downloads, you'll see gspro-r10-connect. Open that up, and the one you'll need is the gspro-r10-connect, and that's the file we need to run. So if you right click, it's not gonna do it for me because I've already done it, but you can choose run or you can choose run as administrator. For me, I had to run this as an administrator to get it working. Once I did that, it was very simple. It popped up, no issues. When you open that file, it will look like this. So this is that GitHub Travis Lang GS Pro API Connect. Now, the first time you open up GS Pro, you've gotta to go to settings. And when you hit that settings icon there, it will pop up with another window. It's not gonna work for me because I've already done it. But the first time you need to hit that settings icon and then it's gonna open up a window and you're gonna to get to choose which launch monitor you have. We want to select, like we downloaded, that API V1 Connect. It's called API V1 Connect. And when you do that, this is what you'll see. You'll see API V1 Connect pop up. And then what you can do is you can actually send a test shot from your R10 Connect and that'll pop up. It'll say shot successful and you'll get your fake metrics in the left hand side there. And now what you'll see is a green light saying that GS Pro API connection from this GitHub Travis Lang download is now connected to the Open API V1 Connect. So they're talking to each other. Now we need to get the R10 connected to this GitHub Travis Lang. So to do that, we turn on the R10. Okay, so I've turned my R10 on. Now I'm gonna get my mobile device that I use to speak to the R10. I'm gonna open up the Garmin Golf app. Okay, so I've got the Garmin Golf app opened up. From there, I'm gonna to go to Garmin devices. So I've got my Garmin devices open now. You'll see that. We're gonna go Garmin approach. It says connected. I'll do my usual sync. I'll do my usual, usual device calibration. And then I'm gonna to go to Golf Sim where it says Golf Sim there. So I'll click on Golf Sim. I'm gonna scroll down until I see E6 Connect, True Golf E6 Connect. You don't need to have E6 Connect on your computer or your mobile device. We're merely using this as a bridge. Okay, I'm gonna click on E6 Connect. And this is gonna pop up. And it's gonna say there, play on PC. We're not gonna do that just yet because this is the first time we're setting this up. So now what we've got to do is we've got to hit this little cog. So the settings icon there, we're going to hit settings. Now this is where you enter in your IP address and your port number. And that IP address and port number has to match the IP and port address that's on your R10 Connect. 
these differ because I was using this on a wired connection. So all I have to do to get this to work back on my Wi-Fi connection is I'll change this port number so it ends in three. And then I'll go test connection and it says, you're all set. Okay, so we're all set. Cool, so from there, you can simply click start session And now you can see we've got a green light on R10 Connect, okay? So now, how this all works, the R10 is connected to your mobile device, okay? And then your mobile device is sending the information into the Travis Lane GitHub um, R10 Connect that you downloaded, and then that's sending the data to the API V1 Connect that you selected within GS Pro, and then it's using it in the game. So you don't need E6 on any of your devices, we're merely using it as a bridge. All right guys, and when that's all done, all that's left to do is just download some courses and go play. Hopefully that isn't too confusing. Hopefully it's cleared up a few things for people. I will say once you've set it up the first time, every other time after that is very simple. All I do, turn on my projector, turn on my laptop, turn on my Garmin, get the phone speaking to the Garmin, and then open up GS Pro, open up that GitHub Travis Lang file, they all connect and talk to each other and you're playing golf. Honestly, within about a minute, two minutes max, you're playing golf. The other little got ya that caught me out, and I was trying to figure this out for a while, was my antivirus and the firewall. So I had to actually turn my firewall off for this to all work and connect to each other. So that was a big thing. I was here for a while trying to figure out why is this not working? And it was actually the firewall that I had to disable um, so this would all speak to each other. So if you're having trouble with the things speaking to each other and working, try either allowing the application through the firewall or just turn the firewall off. All right guys, I hope that helps uh, with any questions that anyone had about getting GS Pro from start to finish and how to get it to work on your with your R10. If you've got any questions, let me know and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.